Hello. I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, we're getting an increase around the globe of very powerful straight line winds from um, thunderstorm complexes. So the best uh, example of where this is increasing is in the US. Um, and these straight line winds are also known as derechos. So as a thunderstorm complex moves uh, across the ground, uh, parts of the thunderstorm produce, uh, can produce very strong downdrafts, which seem to be intensifying, and these downdrafts can lead to intense cold pools and increases in straight line wind velocities um, just underneath the thunderstorm. So a recent study was just done in the US. It looks at 40 years of data. Um, and the difference in this new data is that there's, uh, there's data with a four kilometer grid size, um, which is higher resolution than previous climate models and reanalysis have been done. So <coughs> this um, is very important because it picks out features of these um, derechos or straight line winds that couldn't be picked out in other climate models. So it turns out that the area affected by derechos um, has increased significantly in the last 40 years. In fact, it's almost five times larger than it was before. So this is very, very significant because these derechos or straight line wind events can cause tremendous damage the infrastructure and they seem to come out of nowhere I mean they come out of a thunderstorm but you know you might expect kind of a run of the mill thunderstorm and you get these straight line winds for 10 minutes that take it out of the building and multiple trees etc I've often filmed videos at Conroy Pit um, the dog park uh, my local dog park in Ottawa and the trees there were completely um, crushed, you know, knocked over by these straight line winds, a derecho from uh, a couple couple uh, summers back. So let me get into the details um, of this very, very important wind event, which um, we're starting to learn a lot more about. So this is a paper which I'll be discussing. Thunderstorm straight line winds intensify with climate change. I'll be going through the details of this paper. Uh, I like this illustration here. Okay, so this is a typical cumulonimbus uh, thunderstorm system. You've got the anvil here. Um, you know, as the air is rising up, this is kind of the, uh, you know, the anvil shape that we recognize from thunderstorms. You've got snow and ice uh, at high levels. As you descend down, you get grapple and then hail. And then below that you get rain. In this area you can get, if the moisture laden air inside the thunderstorm reaches drier air, you get very very strong um, evaporation of the moisture in the air and that takes energy out of the surrounding air. So it creates very very cold air uh, which is heavier, denser. Um, so that descends down and um, travels across the ground there's no rotation associated with it not like a tornado so you get these straight line winds very very intense cold cold cool area and straight line winds um, and because of the temperature gradients increasing within the cloud because of climate change fueling more um, high intense storms these downdrafts are increasing in severity and in frequency and they co they're covering actually five times more area than they did uh, 40 years ago but i'll get into those details this is an image of we've got height here this is the source height roughly of the downdraft um, and the blue line is our current climate so it's sort of relative temperature with height you can see the blue line here 
here in the current climate, and this is the area of high winds, the hatched area. And with limited warming, you extend to the yellow line, um, which covers a larger area. And with very strong warming, you cover even a larger area, and the down, there's a steeper curve here, so the air is cooled more and it descends much more quickly, generating the increase in wind speeds. Okay, so I'll get to this paper in just a moment. If you go on Google Images and uh, Google uh, Duratio, okay, uh, you can get lots of information. There's a good Wikipedia on Duratio's explanation of what they are. Um, this is a, the sort of the climatology from the National Weather Service showing the U.S. So this is the probability of derations occurring. So in this area here, and it shifted a bit from Tornado Alley. Of course, Tornado Alley is shifting itself. But in this area, you get four derations every three years. Um, in this area here, you get one derecho every year statistically. And in this broader area here, you get one derecho every two years. And in this much wider area, so it covers a lot, a huge area, you get one derecho every four years. Um, they're very, very damaging wind events, high wind events. And, uh, you know, like I said, we had one in Ottawa. Um, I'll just open the Wikipedia. So, derecho is from the Spanish, derecho, or straight, it means straight. It's a widespread, long-lived, straight-line windstorm that is associated with a fast-moving group of severe thunderstorms known as a mesoscale convective system, or MCS. Okay, so these derechos, they can cause hurricane force or tornado force winds, Heavy rains, flash floods. Um, in many cases, convection induced winds take on a bow echo, if you like. That's a backwards uh, C, if you like, form of squall line. Um, they can remain active. The derecho producing convective system may remain active for many hours and occasionally over multiple days. You know, and if these, these storm fronts are often moving fast, so it might hit an area and last for about 10 minutes in, in one specific area. Um, so it talks about the development. So you get this sort of bow echo, you know, a gust front. Um, this, is, um, this is a very, this is a composite image of this storm system moving, moving across 600 miles over time. 2012 North American Duratio. One of the deadliest and most destructive fast-moving severe thunderstorm complexes in North American history. Um, it, it caused tremendous damage and covered a vast area. Okay, so there's lots of different types of derechos um, in different systems. And uh, there's this image I just showed you. Um, you know, and you can tell, I mean, the trees, when they're knocked down, they're all pointing in the same direction. They're not um, showing variation in the direction they're falling, which occurs in, in tornadoes. Hey, okay, uh, you could also Google, uh, Google images, straight line winds, and uh, there's lots of good information. So, so these trees, um, you know, a tornado would, the trees would fall down be pushed down one way here and on the other side of the tornado this way here of course derechos straight line winds all the trees are falling in the same direction um, okay so there's lots of information you know tremendous damage can be caused by these so straight line winds like this tornado um, of course there's a rotation okay so there's a, there's big differences here downburst you get a small down a microburst the air it's like the bottom of the sky falls out the air rushes down hits the earth spreads in all directions so the trees all ra fall radiating out from the center 
or a macro burst, a bigger version. Um, and uh, then you have the tornadic uh, winds uh, you know, with the rotation, and then you get the derecho, the straight line winds. Okay, so there's lots of information on comparing the two. Okay, so let's talk about this study now. So this is, uh, you know, NCAR, <coughs> UCAR uh, news. So, so uh, damaging thunderstorm winds are increasing in the central US. This was November 2nd, an article that came out. So the new analysis, the paper I'm talking about, it shows the impact of climate change on the outflow from the thunderstorms. Okay. Um, so thunderstorms over the central U.S. are generating increasingly widespread damaging winds, which are associated with billions of dollars in damages. Destructive winds that flow out of thunderstorms in the central U.S. are becoming more widespread with warming temperatures, according to new research by the so, so U.S. National Science Foundation is funding, and at NCAR is National Center for Atmospheric Research. So this new study published in Nature Climate Change shows that the central U.S. experienced a five-fold increase in the geographic area affected by damaging thunderstorm straight-line winds in the past 40 years. So the data goes back 40 years. The research uses a combination of weather observations, so meteorological observations, very high-resolution computer modeling, the very small grid size that can capture these these events and also the analysis of fundamental physical laws to estimate the change in the winds which are so short-lived and localized that they often are not picked up by weather stations the weather stations see the um, progression of the storm on the radar but they don't pick out the fact that um, these derechos uh, can be occurring underneath that storm you need a very fi a much finer grid size to do that. So the National Science Foundation, the NSF, um, funds uh, the NCAR. It funds the National Center for Atmospheric Research. MIT Climate Grand Challenge on Weather and Climate Extremes is also funding this, the work. So thunderstorms are causing more and more of these extreme wind events. Um, said NCAR scientist Andreas Preen, the author of the new study. These gusts uh, can suddenly go from no wind at all to gusts of 60 to 80 miles per hour, and that can be very damaging to buildings, power grids, and human safety. So straight line winds are caused by powerful downdrafts that flow from the base of thunderstorms. These winds are classified as damaging if they exceed 50 knots or about 57 miles per hour. The winds likely cause about 2.5 billion in damage annually in the US, and that's based on insurance industry estimates. In 2020, a particularly powerful derecho, a widespread straight line windstorm associated with fast moving thunderstorms. I mean, these storms really whip along. It caused an estimated 11 billion in damage in the Midwest, just that one storm. Scientists, of course, have long been interested in the impact of climate change on straight line winds, but until now, simulations of climate conditions run on computer models have been too coarse to capture such brief and small scale events. Further clouding the picture, like the pun, weather observations appear to show there are more periods of little to no wind worldwide. This is interesting. It's a phenomenon known as global stilling. You've heard of global dimming. Well, here's global stilling. Okay, again, global stilling. It's, there's periods, there's more periods of time where there's little to no wind worldwide. But paradoxically, maximum wind speeds are rising simultaneously. Okay, so the, so basically, there's many, there's more periods where there's no wind, but when there is wind, it's setting uh, records, record speeds for maximum wind speeds. So to determine if damaging straight line winds are becoming more widespread, this study turned to a high-resolution computer model simulation that 
NCAR scientists recently produced in collaboration with the U.S. Geological Survey. So the advanced simulation is named CONUS 404. CONUS is continental, uh, continental, C-O-N, United States. It is 40 years, uh, 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 40 years plus years is the study interval. And the resolution it simulates climate and weather and water hydrological emission at a resolution or grid size of four kilometers, which is 2.5 miles across the continental U.S. Okay, so higher resolution model. So it's studying up the summertime conditions in the central U.S., which is a global hotspot for extreme winds. The high resolution modeling that will get a fine grained picture of winds. Uh, so the analysis expanded from 95 weather stations to 9,387 points in simulation. So basically, straight line winds have increased in the last 40 years by about almost five times, actually 4.8 times. And then the accuracy of the simulation was, uh, was checked by comparing it to measurements of selected winds in the past at the 2020 to ratio. The simulations reliably captured the straight line winds as opposed to previous or simulation with larger grid size that failed to capture many such events. Okay, so then this led to the question of whether climate change could be responsible for the increase of wind. So basically the physics of the system was looked at. The thermodynamics of straight line wind was looked at. How actual wind events such as the 2020 ratio would be affected by different atmospheric conditions based on first order physical principles. So the straight line winds result when rain or hail at high altitudes within the thunderstorm evaporate. So they hit dry air, the water evaporates out, they get evaporative cooling of the air, and the air is cooler and denser, so it plummets down to the surface, and at the surface it spawns intense winds that rush outward. Uh, the calculation showed that climate change is altering the picture by increasing the temperature difference between the cool air in the downdrafts and the warm surrounding air, or the environmental air around it. This larger temperature difference lets the cold air have a, have a much more uh, powerful uh, buoyancy um, deficit, so it descends even faster, making it more likely for a thunderstorm to generate these damaging straight line winds. Okay, so it's crucial, the, the risk is increasing. The risk of straight line winds across the US and many other parts of the world is, is increasing, and this needs to be looked at when you uh, want to try to and, and uh, change building plans to increase resiliency of, of, of infrastructure. And if you neglect it, then you know, you suffer the penalty. Okay, so this is the actual paper. So it was just published online, November 2nd. Um, so, thunderstorms, straight line winds intensify with climate change. So straight line winds, or SLWs, are non-tornadic thunderstorm winds that are causing widespread damage in many regions around the world. These powerful gusts are associated with strong downdrafts and thunderstorms rear inflow jets, and meso vortices. Despite their significance, our understanding of climate change affecting straight line winds is limited. So here's a focus on the central US, which is a global hotspot for straight line winds. And it uses, the study uses observations, it uses high resolution modeling, and theoretical considerations of the physics of what's happening to show that straight line winds have intensified over the past 40 years. Theoretical consideration suggests that straight line winds should intensify at a rate of 7.5% per degree Celsius increase of warming, but the observed rates show a more pronounced increase of about 13% per degree Celsius. You might notice this uh, 7.5 Celsius Clapeyron equation from the air can be about 7% of water vapor for the degree Celsius.
this is showing is that with the straight line winds, um, the model showed it should be 7.5% increase intensification of the straight line winds rate uh, per degree Celsius, but we're observing 13%. So clearly, this needs to be looked at. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, you know, there's various types of, well, I'll, I'll go quickly just on the intro and then I'll, I'll show you the figures. So straight line winds cause substantial damage to buildings, energy grids, agriculture production, and human safety. They're far more frequent than tornadoes. But little is known about their characteristics in many regions, particularly the global south. model at 
a coarser grid size. So we'll start at the bottom here. This is the um, this is the cake, the mixed layer cake, M cake. Okay, so you can see structure here. Um, the scale is here. It's kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, very very high energy. Radar reflectivity here of the storm. This is the wind speed at 10 meters, uh, going into very very high wind speeds. It's picked out in the, in the, in the, in the grid grid model, the high resolution model, and then you can see the uh, the CPI um, is the cold pool. Basically, showing that there's straight line wind generation here. Now, this is the exact same storm. This is 10th of August 2020, the deratio that occurred. And the, the higher, the coarser model, the European model, it didn't even, it didn't pick out the structure. It didn't pick out the, um, the, uh, the, the radar reflectivity was washed out without detail. It didn't expect any uh, significant uh, high winds at 10 meters and there was no cold pool um, so, so it didn't it didn't basically pick out the fact that there was a, a very very harmful damaging duration because you need uh, this is a four kilometer bridge size it's 40 years of data so it misses all of these sort of things. And, and you can see some of the trends that are increasing here. Um, there is a, a percent of the decade change. It's interesting, this is a global skilling phenomenon where there's many, many days where there's less than 1.5 meters per second winds. And this is where there's uh, you know, higher winds. And you can see an increase. This is the maximum wind speed observed from 1980 to 2020, and this is observed, uh, you know, 1.8. Um, this is the maximum wind speed percentage, um, and you can see an increase uh, here observed. This is the European model, and this is the most recent migrating model. Okay, um, and this is, uh, you know, this is. all of these curves but the trend is going up we're getting more and more um, we're getting a five-fold increase in the geographic area okay uh, this is showing uh, the uh, 10 meter wind speeds um, in meters per second and this is the <coughs> two meter temperature change okay so as uh, you know, so you can see uh, the changes. Uh, this is this is from the simulations. Uh, a is observed is the black line. Uh, simulated is the red line. Okay, this is the you know observed for non-convective winds, observed for con convective storms, the increase per decade of the wind speed, and this is. Uh,
if we, yeah, let's look at the discussion. So climate change impacts on straight line winds. Intensity of straight line winds. Parts of these increases are closely 